Somebody's going to hear something. It came upon a midnight clear. Uh, God rest you, very gentlemen. Hark the har hark and the hark and herald the angels sing. <laughs> Same way at Easter, the bunnies and the rabbits and the eggs and all that kind of stuff. Eventually, it's going to be, it's really about Jesus. So, I think that's good. That's a good aspect. It does introduce the secular world to Jesus. You know, these Christian holidays have pagan roots. Most scholars agree that Jesus was not born on December 25th. And one of the main reasons we hear Scripture tells us it's read in Luke that, that shepherds were out watching over their flocks by night. They didn't do that in the dead of winter. Because the pastures were not green. You all ride around look at the pastures out there they're, they're generally not green. So that was a time of year. So that, that's what scholars generally believe. You know, the origin of Christmas, again, as we know it, especially the secular part, really has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus. It doesn't. You may say, my goodness, that's heresy. It doesn't. It doesn't. Early Christians didn't even celebrate the birth of Jesus. So we're going to unwrap Christmas and take a look at its history. I, I, I've done versions of this before. I think it's very interesting. You may know it very well, you, but you may not. You may not know any of this. But I think we need to understand why this holiday that we really get wrapped up in how it came about. And it's interesting. It's interesting. You know, again, Christmas evolved from pagan rituals that centered around the winter solstice. Yes. Solstice. Past Tuesday, December 21st, was the shortest amount of daylight that we have. The next day, today, just a little longer. You look at it, sunset, go, go look at your, everybody's got their phone with them, you look at it, go look at the sun. Sunset about, about a minute later. Sunrise, about a minute later. You know, back then, as we talked last week, we talked about the astronomers and the wise men and all that kind of stuff. You know, the people observed that stuff. You know, they sit around the fire and say, well, my goodness, this, this really uh, 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 short, we don't have much daylight. Now, in, in the southern hemisphere, though, oh, gosh, this is a, we got a lot of daylight. So they observed those kind of things. But, for us, the winter solstice was what sort of is the origins of this, celebrating that. The Romans celebrated Saturnalia with gift giving, merry making, and greenery. So it was a time again that, that they did this. They also had something called Juvenalia, where they gave gifts to kids, they honored children. And they also worship Mithra, Mithras, Mith Mithras, the sun god. When did they worship the sun god? December 25th. The Vikings, Scandinavians, cold up there, celebrated Yule. Y-U-L-E. We heard that term? Yule. With evergreens. And burning a log. The Yule log. For 12 days. See how all this stuff sort of fits together a little bit? 
For 12 days, they, they burn that Yule log. I went yesterday on Christmas Day. You got a couple of options. You can watch the Christmas story over and over and over. It's some good movies. Or you can go and see the arms of Santa Claus stuck in the fire. Wow. It's called, it's called Yule, Yule Log, I think it was on Peachtree Peach TV or whatever it was on. And, and Santa Claus is stoking the fire. And you just watch a fire burn on TV while there's Christmas songs playing. The Vikings brought evergreens inside to honor that tree's ability to survive the winter. That's the reason the word evergreen, it's always green. You go look at an oak tree right now, hmm. or a poplar tree, or a hickory tree, it don't have the leaves on it, does it? They're gone. My goodness, we have to, those of y'all that have had yards with a lot of hardwoods in it, blow the leaves. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. oh gosh. Frank Costanza. Everybody know Frank Costanza? Celebrated Festivus. <laughs> he had just a pole. He found tinsel to be distracted. How many know about Festivus? You know about Festivus? Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> I doubt y'all raise your hand. Anybody know about Festivus? Come on, man. I know some of you in here. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you later. <laughs> that's, that's a joke. You know, these winter festivals had a major influence, not Festivus, but everything, with fest everything other than Festivus had a major influence on Christmas as we know it. In the fourth century, the church declared on December 25th to have to be the feast of the, the nativity. The day to celebrate the birth of Christ. I don't have an exact day on that, but in, in the, roughly in the 4th century, that's when that happened. Okay. The Romans did this. The Vikings did this. Well, let's just Christianize pagan rituals. That's what happened. Again, I, in, in reality, I think that's a good thing. We just can't be sucked into the pagan part of it. That's more at the end on that. Evergreens were decorated. Of course, back in that time, they was apples and Maybe some kind of little trinkets or something like that. They were hanging on the trees. Holly was used because it would symbolize the crown of thorns. Read Holly, where we lived on Mineral Springs Road for 23 years. We had a big holly tree back in about middle ways back at that property. And I remember, you know, he didn't want to walk around it barefooted in the sun. Mm -hmm. But them holly tree, them holly leaves come off and they are sharp. And my goodness, I got a little holly bush right in my fence at home now. And I poison, dug, <laughs> cut. I just hate that. You know, just, it just, you can't even get in there and do anything with it. You know, it penetrates gloves. But they used holly just to, to symbolize the crown of thorns. And guess what? Something called Christ Mass was hailed. Christ Mass. Y'all get that? Come on. This way, like, oh, that should be one of them aha moments when Christ Mass was hailed. You know, in England, up until 1800-ish, uh, the English, it was party time. I mean, serious party time in England. Christmas was much 
more secular than sacred. And again, I cannot overemphasize how much party time it was. I've read and seen stuff on that. They, as we say, they would throw down during that time of Christmas. You know, so much so that the Puritans in 1652 tried to outlaw Christmas in England. Yes. They tried to outlaw it. They even went in and they said, well, you know, try it in England and try to do uh, purify England from all that debauchery. So when they came to America, what did they do? They brought that anti-Christmas feeling with them to America. Okay, moving on up a little bit. After independence from England, Americans didn't celebrate Christmas because it was too English. Think about it. You fought a war of independence in the mid to late 1700s. You struggle, you know, with independence. You, you, you in the unifying the, the colonies and what have you. You know, certain things didn't work out. They created the final constitution. So, you know, and plus you also then the War of 1812. You know, War of 1812. England had tried, tried again. I mean, invaded, they were defeated, but anyway, Christmas was, in America at that time, was too English. So they didn't want to celebrate it. By the mid 1800s, that started changing. Christmas trees, you had a lot of German immigrants, and that's where the Christmas trees stopped to its origins. Germanic, Scandinavian, people started bringing Christmas trees into their homes by the mid-1800s. Then you'd always had, on December the 6th, excuse me, December the 6th, you always had St. Nicholas Day. You know, St. Nicholas is the pa a patron saint of Catholicism. So that they always had it, had it for many years. And they celebrated that. They celebrated St. Nicholas Day. The Dutch had Sinterklaas. <laughs> here comes Sinterklaas. Here comes Sinterklaas. Right down Sinterklaas Lane. If you're in the Netherlands. Here comes Sinterklaas. Here comes Sinterklaas. Right down Sinterklaas Lane. But in 1863... Thomas Mask wrote, "Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirred, not even a mouse. You want to go as far as memory? The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hope that Saint Nicholas, who the patron saint of the Catholic Church, would be there. And that's about as far as I can go. You know, that, that, that started popularizing Christmas. Retailers saw an opportunity and that really began the commercialization of Christmas as we know it. So really go back to Thomas Mass to was the night before Christmas. It was extremely popular. Uh, and it, it's still, you know, like I said, people remember, we've all heard it, learned it, whatever. Uh, that's where the Christ, the Christ commercialization of Christmas really began. It's okay to celebrate, and I, I, I know y'all, and I probably don't have to tell you this, but it's okay to celebrate the secular part of Christmas. It really is. It, it, it really is. I remember, I guess, you 
I'm glad to see my family here, my children, grandchildren here today. You know, I remember, you know, oh, too secular, just, you know, I don't, you know, maybe we shouldn't do that, and all this, and, uh, you know, I was outvoted, and I never was really strong about it, but it's okay to celebrate. And again, as I think through it, I think there is benefit to it because it puts Jesus out there, maybe subtly, but it puts Jesus out there for the general public. But we've got to keep one thing in mind. This scripture I'm about to read. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. See that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the traditions of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. Then Paul tells us in verse 9 what Christmas is all about. For in Him all the fullness of deity in, dwells in bodily form. Christ is. We cannot say it too much. Christ is God in the flesh. Christ coming to be born as a baby is what Christmas is all about. Verse 10, in Him you have been made complete. He is the head over all rule and authority. Don't be sucked in by secular tradition. Celebrating it, observing it, is okay. That's not being sucked in. Now, you don't need to be like the British were in the 1700s and just partying down and throwing down. That ain't, I don't think, right anytime. What a simple way to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Crazy. Don't be a slave to those traditions. Be a slave to Christ. Be a slave to Christ. He is God in human form. He is God in human form. And again, I say it again, that's what Christmas is all about. Amen? In Him, in Christ, you are made complete. Well, you might say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm all complete right now. Well, you may be physically complete. You may be material complete. But without Christ, you are spiritually incomplete. Jesus is Christmas. Christmas is Jesus. Yeah, all of this stuff is good. I've got more leftovers than we'll be able to eat. And I hate to throw food away. So we're going to eat a lot of leftovers. Already plotting it out. <laughs> On the way to church. Well, we can have this and that. You got ham and you got turkey. You got broccoli salad. You got deviled eggs left over. Of course, you got cake and all that kind of stuff. As long as you don't eat too much. Unwrapping Christmas. all the paper 
out. Somewhere in that, there's a gift for you, a, a gift card or something like that, and you put it, looking at it, and all this kind of stuff. And then there's Jesus. Then there's Jesus. In Him, you are complete. 